if you just want to go, woo, it's not so great. Hello and welcome to Game On, the show that doesn't think twice before bringing a spoon to a gunfight, because it knows it'll probably still win. Mm -hmm. Coming up this week... Keep pushing, keep pushing. Does F1 2011 have the formula for success? Gears of War want to be a billionaire? So freaking bad. And news in briefs. The brief snippets of gaming Gutspar that have caught our fancy this week. Is Gutspar even a word? Who knows? Do you mean Chutzpah? Bless you. Before all that though, Dan Smith, have you seen my new toy? <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's not a toy, Steph. That's a sophisticated piece of gaming technology <laughs> and it's red. Yeah, which is better than yours, which is like not green and not blue, but something in the middle of green and blue. Yeah, but they, they all do the same thing though, so it's fine. Yeah, but this one goes with my shoes, my yeah. sluttiest shoes. Mine go with my shoes when I'm wearing my not quite green, not quite blue shoes. Slutty shoes. Nintendo 3DS. It's a game changer. Now, F1 2011. It was released on September the 20th and, ironically, we've only just caught up with our own review. But not to worry, we're making a last dash down the straight to cross the line. Just a little bit after the chequered flag. The game tells you to be the driver, live the life, go compete. Which is a nice idea, considering Fernando Alonso earned about £26 million last year. Yeah, but he does have to do that dodgy car advert in the shrink's office. So, is it really worth it? Yeah, a bit embarrassing, yeah. Keep pushing, keep pushing. The key to F1 2011, though, is the idea of being the driver. The game is not a straightforward pimp my ride race. A couple of laps and be done with it, affair. Far from it. Every race begins with a practice session that, depending on your commitment, can last a whole hour. But once that's done, is it straight to the starting grid? Hells no! Next, you face the qualifying round. Which I suppose if it was in real life would essentially be attempting to beat Sebastian Vettel to first on the grid. Yeah. Difficult chask. Chask? <laughs> chask. When you finally make it to a race, you can find yourself competing for up to 58 laps. Or three, depending on what setting you decide on. The career mode is almost more simulator than it is game, which is no bad thing. It's an epically intricate piece of development from Codemasters, who reeled in actual F1 test drivers and Pirelli tyre experts to give feedback on last year's effort. It'd be like us reeling in real journalists to make this show. Harsh. Alternatives for the more casual gamer who can't find the time to commit to 58 laps around 19 circuits five times. Like Grand Prix mode, which is effectively a quick race option. But of course, they're F1 cars that go like 200 miles an hour, so when you think about it, every race is a quick race. Definitely quicker than your wit. You can also give multiplayer a go online or in local play. The online races support 16 players, which gives you a proper opportunity to get competitive. Or you can attempt a co-op career mode if you're into sharing the limelight. Who's into sharing the limelight? Yeah. Maybe one of the highlights of the F1 2011 is its graphics. The confusing moment when you glance at the screen and think, wait, am I looking at real cars or highly refined pixels sent forth to confuse my mind? Blurring those all-important boundaries between reality and computer-generated images, it kind of reminds me of when you superimposed your head onto that picture of Brad Pitt's body. I creepy. think you will find he superimposed his body onto my head. Yeah, that makes sense. Side we could possibly see with the game is its heightened levels of realism that might just be a bit confusing for casual gamers. Yeah, if you're not up for a bit of a challenge and just looking to accelerate and turn, you probably won't enjoy yourself. But this clearly isn't the experience Codemasters have tried to create for us and what they've aimed for, they've achieved, and then some. All in all, 
in all, F1 2011 is a serious racing game for those who appreciate the finer intricacies of driving a car round and round and round a track. But the game definitely gets a podium finish. Now all that's left to do is spray champagne everywhere. Why, right, Dan, this is a studio with expensive equipment. Fine. Moment's gone. I say it has. Brilliant. Well done. Next up, Gears of War is absolutely rolling in it. And we don't mean freshly spewed lambent emulsion. Mm -mm, we mean money. Josh. Reddies. Wonga. Now in darkness, world stops turning. After the third instalment in the franchise was released, it's racked up sales of over 3 million copies in its first 10 days. That is 300,000 per day. 12,500 per hour. And 208 per minute. 3 copies a second! You do realise though that in the time it took us to work all that out, the sales figures have increased even more, so all of our numbers are totally off. We'll just say we were rounding down. What's more, Gears 3 is now the top grossing game of 2011. A rather remarkable feat. But will it still hold that title come the end of the year? There are quite a lot of huge titles to be released over the coming months, several of which definitely stand a chance of overtaking Gears. Which one of them do you think will outsell Marcus Phoenix's final adventure? Better yet, which game do you want to outsell it? The success of Gears 3 has now shifted the whole franchise past the $1 billion mark making it the first Xbox 360 exclusive ever to do so. Now that is a lot of Wonga. And now we come to news in briefs. Let us don our super serious faces and prepare to inform the world. OK, you be Hugh Edwards and I'll be Trevor McDonald. Mm-hmm. EA have already announced that FIFA 12's successor, presumably due to be titled FIFA 13, will be PlayStation Move compatible. But it won't compromise the gameplay and just be a gimmick. Of course, there is always the argument that if you're effectively playing football in your lounge, you may as well just go out and play it for real. Don't be ridiculous. And next, what's new, pussycat? Whoa, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know, what is new? Well, everybody's favourite shoe-wearing feline is back and without his ugly green mate. Puss in Boots is getting his own game and THQ have released these screenshots. One shows Puss climbing high above the ground. It's okay, if he falls, he'll land on his feet. Another shows a mustachioed man running away from the swashbuckling kitty. Some people are allergic to cats. And this, three men brandishing their swords at an innocent pussy. Ignoring that horrendous use of the P-word, I think we may have to call the RSPCA. That is animal cruelty, plain and simple. Next, L.A. Noir, everybody's favourite trilby-wearing crime drama, has been given a release date for its PC version. The 8th of November, we'll see a boxed Windows version, plus digital crime available on stream and on live. The PC version will be called the Complete Edition, and will do exactly what it says on the tin. Or box. Or digital download code. Gamers will have access to all of the DLC from the console versions right from the off. Lucky. So what if I took a look around that car? And finally, Assassin's Creed Revelation fans, you'll like this. As will fans of famous hooks. Like Captain Hook. Or maybe the phrase hook, line and sinker. Like that, yes. It's your... Where is your hook blade? My hook blade? Ezio's latest weapon, the hook blade, is revealed in this new trailer and we get a glimpse of what it can be used for. Of course, it can also be detached and used as a coat hanger. Ba, 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 ba. Well then, that's all for this week. We hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. But hopefully you've enjoyed it even more. You're now contractually obliged to like the game on Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash game on TV. Disclaimer, you're not technically obliged. And while you're at it, follow us, but only on Twitter, not in real life. People get in trouble for that. Yeah. We're now off to race the rescue of a cat who's being bullied for having a hook for a hand. More gaming gamminess next week. <laughs> I think you mean shots pa. Bless you. <laughs> Greeny blue shoe shoes. Greeny blue shoe shoes. Greeny blue who shoes. Who shoes are metallic red? Come on! <laughs> Once that done, is it straight to the starting grid? Hells no. <laughs> <laughs> Once that's done, is it that was a bit loud. Once that's done, is it <laughs> Once that's done, is it straight <laughs> I can't do this. Beat Sebastian Vettel to first on the grid. <laughs> Kind of reminds me of when you superimpose your body onto that picture of Brad Pitt. It was creepy. <laughs>
Wait. That doesn't work, does it? <laughs> what? Head. Head onto a <laughs> I don't know. Converge your body onto that photo of Brad Pitt. What would that achieve? A confusing moment when you glance at the chameleon. You glance at a chameleon and think, hello, lizard. <laughs> Can we spray imaginary champagne? <laughs> what about imaginary champagne? <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the best bit of the show. Gears of War is rolling in it, and we. <laughs> hello. FIFA's 12s. That's a rubbish, Trevor McDonald. EA have already announced that FIFA 12 successor. This is the IDV Evening News. Is that how Bong. he talks? FIFA 12's. You are now contractually obliged to like the game on Facebook page at Facebook.com forward slash game on TV. Cool. Bosh.